We're here before Tane Mahuta, the living embodiment of thousands of years of knowledge, of wisdom, of meaning for our people, a connection to our gods. For me, there is another. Here in the Bay of Islands, Māori life was profoundly influenced by the arrival of Pākehā settlers. They were intent on extending trade and wealth for themselves and for the British Empire. Along with these dreams of gold and glory, they also brought missionaries who were messengers of a God who, in many ways, underpinned their vision of civilization. On Christmas in 1814, a pōhiri was held at Ohi for the local rangatira Ruatara. He'd returned with a special guest, Reverend Samuel Marsden, who he'd met on his travels in England and Australia. And Marsden took the opportunity to take the first Christian service in this land saying, the glory of the Lord shone about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. The event is often portrayed simplistically as a beginning and in some ways an end. The seed that was sown bore fruit that was beyond anyone's imagination. The biblical stories that spoke in such powerful and intimate ways to our ancestors came through the filter of the European missionary. These men and women of faith could be amazing people, capable of insight and courage. They were also change agents amongst Māori on an unprecedented scale. And of course, they were agents of empire, convinced of their cultural superiority, seeking to mould Māori into their own cultural identity. When the missionaries first arrived, they, they were shocked about how much conflict there was in Māori society, in Māori communities. And they were shocked about how much our people loved to fight. They, you know, they really, really loved to fight. Nothing's changed. <laughs> and uh, in the expression that we have amongst our people right down in Ngāti Rauko and Ngāti Tō, right down at, at, right at the Tīpoko Tika, is uh, he pakanga te kai. He pakanga te kai, meaning that you know, warfare and conflict was absolutely endemic. The missionaries struggled to change Māori, and their work was slow but fruitful. When our forebears encountered Christianity, they worked just as hard to understand it. Hokianga was a place of early encounter, encounter of people, of trade, of technology, and of belief systems. And when God and scripture met Atua and Tikanga, it was an explosive mix. The settlers not only introduced new ideas to Māori, but also technology that multiplied the impact of long-standing inter-tribal rivalries. The new technology of muskets introduced a frenzy of warfare, which the new idea of Christian peace had to try to stop. It was an eye for an eye and a tooth for tooth um, a culture at the time. Um, don't get me wrong, let's not, I'm not saying there wasn't love also there. It wasn't, I'm not saying there wasn't also all of these other uh, nicer qualities of being human, but at the time of the arrival of the missionaries, there was a huge was. amount of conflict in the, in the Māori world. And I think this, um, this was the context in which the missionaries came to. As colonisation began to spread through Aotearoa, the ideas of missionary Christianity found a welcome home in the minds of our tipuna. The Bible, at the end of the day, is a record of the oral tradition of a people. Another land, for sure, another people, another time, but it's born of an indigenous context. It's born from a people that were closely connected to um, their human condition and their land and to their experience of the divine. So when their stories were uh, re-communicated to us, 
um, the, the ears of our Māori ancestors began to ring because they could understand. Moses speaks of a mountain, we have mountains. Moses speaks of the, the River Jordan, we have rivers. Moses speaks of a creator God who wants to be life-giving and, and wants us to fulfill uh, all the potential of our, of our human existence. We have that same experience too. So our tipuna, uh, more deeply steeped in, in their tikanga and their reo than we'll ever be, saw the parallels immediately and wanted to harness the, all the positive potential that this Bible story had for us. The Holy Bible is full of the astounding, the remarkable, the supernatural. There are revelations. Prophets receive their visions from God, signs of power, miracles of healing, struggles for justice and liberation. Kahore i ruku i roto i te rā ao, hoeno he puka puka noiho, me ngā kōrero ngā porōpiti, e tika ana e tahi wāhanga, e ahu kore take e tahi, e he ana e tahi, e ngari ko ngā whakapapa heke iho, koe tau ngā hāhia mahia nei e rā pērai ngā mōmona e ki ana, ko tātou i heke iho, i ngā tamariki a Aperahama. Engari ko te nuinga ngā Māori ka wehe atu te raki te tā, he mahi mo te rātapu. According to historical accounts, Penetana Papahuri here, also known as Tiatua Wera, was one who accepted the missionaries' God, but rejected their way of worship. He was a renowned Ngāpuhi tohunga, descended from a tradition of healers and possessed visionary powers. Papahuri here, he was trained when very young to be a tohunga. And uh, his knowledge um, grew up in Hokianga uh, with many other tohunga around him. Uh, there was kaitoke, and there were uh, many others, and he grew up at a time where uh, the tohunga had to start charting a new pathway that brought in uh, westernization from Europe being Māori and Christianity, and try and get these three things to function smoothly together. Papahuri here was literate and became well-versed in the Papahuri here was a product of a society where the merger of Māori thought and biblical insight created politics of uncertainty. Leadership was called for, a vision was needed. The snake is a biblical symbol of challenge which Moses used to confront the power of Pharaoh in Egypt. And Moses used the snake as a symbol of hope, saving the people as long as they kept faith. To a people who had never seen a snake, this was an abstract image that Papahuri here brought to life through the strength of his words. He used the image of a snake as a new and powerful message to his followers, that the new forces facing the people could be overcome. I think that that word ngārara is a word that is always evocative of a human being who is slippery in their manner of someone who is untrustworthy. And I imagine that that's what uh, Papa Huri here would have done with that imagery at that time. Uh, likened it to, to something that was present in the, in, the, in the community, whether it was the tuna, <laughs> that would have been the closest really, wouldn't it? Uh, so, like the tuna, you know, you, you can't you can't handle these things easily if you don't have, if you don't have a firm grip on their on um, on their bodies. Then uh, the chances are that they'll either get away from you, and you won't know what the consequences are of that contact that, nonetheless, you've had. Missionary Christianity was based on writings about scripture and prayer. Religion, therefore, came hand in hand with literacy and literacy had a transformative power all of its own. This was not the time of the internet and social networking, but an era when a great orator who evoked powerful imagery was the greatest form of communication. Thousands would come to hear Papahuri here as he took on missionaries in debate, as he made this extraordinary imagery come to life inside the minds of his audience and his followers. 
A symbol allows someone to tell a story, basically, tell a narrative, and bring in the land, bring in the people, bring in the history, and really map it out, depending on who your audience is. Through the history of Māori art, symbolism has been important. It's been a mnemonic device which carvers have used to tell stories, which uh, men and women have used as a touch point and talked about ancestors. And that continued through the 19th century with the prophets who came through. And so just as they had grown up learning about the importance of symbolism as ways into the past and ways into our stories and our whakapapa, they used that and they brought that through in very st uh, specific and interesting ways in their own um, faiths. Powerful, potent images such as these are used by all cultures to give a sense of the divine. These tohu, these symbols, are not necessarily literal or even logical. Instead, it's the divine at work in the world wanting us to do more, to be more. And whether it was a burning hand or a diamond on top of a moanga or two birds or even a snake, the prophets were people of image. But let's not get obsessed with the facts of the prophetic image because that's not what's really important. Instead, it's what the symbol brought to their followers and to us today. When I read and when I've explored the impact of the, those whom we traditionally regard as the prophets in our midst, um, and including Papa Huri here and Te Tua Haumene and Tafio and so on, I mean the, the 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 profound subtlety and yet the powerful intellect that they brought to bear in terms of critiquing what was actually going on in this country is just astonishing. Papahuri here gained a large following in the Hokianga. His interpretations of the Old Testament thrilled his listeners. They even called themselves Jews. In the 1830s, missionary William Woon wrote that Papahuri here pretends to raise the dead and relates what he's heard from departed chiefs. And he also reported that a brilliant comic seen for a fortnight excited the attention of this deceiver and has given the people his opinion of it, its design, and it's appearing at this time, and further, that it is under his control. The missionaries may have been sceptical, but many Māori chiefs, including Hone Heke, were not. Heke gave Papahuri here an honoured role as his war tohunga. His powers and following as a prophet rose to their peak during a conflict with the British, where, according to some, he saved Heke's people by making them disappear. Akutipuna, Yangatiawa, Pomone Money. At the Pagato here, Pomone Money. Towa to a no hoki, Kiroto Marainui, Kiroto Tefano Apanui, Pomone Money. Towa to a no hoki, Fitu Mataro, Kiroto Nati Pro. Kafakaro here, I tow reka reka. O Kutipuna, Natipuna, Oera o Akuiwi. Fakara Ato mata tipuna a ko piripita mata kura na nei hari mai te fakapono kiroto ite tai rafiti ka ako ia mata ia oku tipuna ki te fakapono ko fakatu ke hia a he fara fara kara ki araupo ko kara ki arata i kare he puka puka ko mau kiroto i arata nga ka nga kara ki Na piripitau mātāku ra wera ra ako. Pakaru ki roto o te, o te tai rāwhi te whānui. Ahoi anō ko te whakapono, kraiti ana, i tahuri wako tīpuna ki taku mōhio, i ki te rātau, i te mea kokorero kē, mō te mārama o tātau tīpuna, 
ki te hanganga o te ao te rangi me te whenua, te hanganga i te tangata i a, i a hine ahuone i a hine tititama, ana ka heke, ki a tiki i ahua, ana ka puta ko tātau, te tangata. Ana ko mārama rātau ki era, ko ki te anoho ki te, te rite tanga o ngā kōrero kai roto i ngā karaipiture, te hanganga i ārama rao ko ewe i roto i te, te one one, me te mō ako anō hoki ko te atua i hoa, te atua o ronga mano, he atua aroha, he atua ātawhai, he atua hai i etahi wā, engari he atua aroha. A hakoa te nui o he, ka hea taima koe e he ana e hane one. Me te mō ako anō hoki ko te atua i hoa, te atua o ronga mano, he atua aroha, he atua ātawhai, he atua hai i etahi wā, engari he atua aroha. A hakoa te nui o he, ka hea taima koe e he ana e hara ana, ka i reira tonu te atua o o rā o ngā mano e tatari ana ke hoki mai koe ki ae. Ka murua o hara i raro i ngā tika ngā atu mataunga ko te kai māhau ko te mate. Ai, ki te he koe. Ai.